We want to bring in Rudy Giuliani, the president's attorney, by telephone now. And, sir, can you hear me? I can. All right, I terrific. Can hear Thank you for your time. Go ahead. You watch Bob Mueller and your reaction to what he said. Well, I don't think it's much of a reaction. It just repeats the report. He uh, had no evidence or insufficient evidence, which is the same thing for a prosecutor, uh, of collusion. And al although he couldn't reach a decision on obstruction, that's a decision. When a prosecutor can't reach a decision, that's the decision. So there's no case on obstruction. There's no case on collusion. Then when he goes on to discuss the DOJ policy, well, we all know that's the DOJ policy. I mean, when I first met him, he was a little unsure about whether he could indict or not. But obviously he can't. We all know that. But he still offered his opinions in the report. I mean, the report is 430 pages of opinion. So I... The reality is, and he offered his opinion on collusion, he offered his opinion on obstruction, his opinion on collusion was uh, there is no case. His opinion on obstruction was that he couldn't conclude that the president uh, committed obstruction. Yeah, you know, two things on that, Rudy, if I could interject here. Insufficient evidence on Russian collusion. What, what, what does that suggest to you when, when he concludes it that way? And, and do you believe that is stated any differently than in the Mueller report? No, I mean, there are all different ways of saying it, but the reality is that's what a prosecutor does. When he added this notion of exoneration, it's completely foreign to American law. I mean, you had to have learned that somewhere in the Soviet Union, that you have to exonerate somebody. I did it for years. I never exonerated anyone. I found, is there enough evidence to bring a charge or isn't there? If there's not enough evidence bring a charge end of case case is over so why person, does he use person, this why does as a lawyer now why does he use that language insufficient evidence because he spent because his uh, because i believe spending all that time with people like weissman he's lost his notion of american fairness i mean i think it's a, i think it's to me as a lawyer it's astounding that he's expo he's expounding on uh, can we exonerate or can't we exonerate or can't we do this or can't we do that the reality is he doesn't have a case doesn't have a collusion case, doesn't have an obstruction case. I mean, if, if he was constrained by this Justice Department rule, then why did he do the investigation at all? When do you believe he knew that there was insufficient evidence? No, I think that's a, uh, that's a reason maybe he doesn't want to be questioned. I mean, I think the Republicans would have a field day with him. I think he concluded that a year before. In fact, I think it's going to come out in the next couple of months that the investigation never should have been started in the first place. Are you suggesting this was April or May of 2018? Well, I think well, I think when Papadopoulos fell apart, they knew they knew they didn't have a case. I don't know when that date was. When was that? Well, I don't know exactly when, but it sure as heck was about a year before they reached they reached or filed their report. Uh, on the obstruction uh, charge here, he, he said, based on longstanding guidelines, a president cannot be charged. Now, you fought for a year to make sure that President Trump did not sit down with Bob Mueller or anyone on his team. You did submit answers on paper, question and answer, back and forth, but no face-to-face -face interview. He, he, he's making the case that a sitting president cannot be charged. What do you think of that? Well, okay, that's, that's, that is the law. I mean, a sitting president can't be charged. So then, if that's the case, then why did he offer all those opinions? Why did he offer all those recommendations and, and suggestions? Why did, he, why did he investigate? The reality is that he gave us his opinion on collusion and obstruction. And his opinion is you can't bring a case. Bob, that's the end of it. That's what a prosecutor does. And you don't prove negatives. I mean, it's almost impossible to do that. And what they've done here is a, is a perversion, a combination of him and the media. It's a, it's a, and I'm surprised at Bob because he's a better lawyer than that. I don't know where have you, came. Yeah, have you, I apologize for the interruption. I just want to squeeze in a few more questions while I have you. Have you spoken to the president in the past hour? Well, I don't comment on that. Okay. Well, did you speak to him last night? Because apparently well, the word was the, the White House. The White House knew Bob Mueller was going to make a statement today. Were you aware of the material or what Bob Mueller was going to say? I thought he would do what he did. I mean, he basically repeated his report. I mean, it's, the same, it, it's a, it's a five-minute version of his report, and uh, this whole, the, what did he say? He said, I don't have a collusion case, and I don't, have a, I don't have an obstruction case. He says slightly different things about it, but that's the conclusion. 
And that's all that matters from the point of view of a prosecutor. It's a real question as to whether it's ethical at all to him, for him to be discussing it or writing about it. Yeah. Once you well, conclude that you can't bring a case, the rules of ethics say, as a prosecutor, you've got to keep your mouth shut. And, of course, you know, they did 430 pages of regurgitating every possible thing they could regurgitate, much of which was unfair. Well, you, you know that Democrats will go forward, possibly, with I don't some see what sort of— Well, here is the statement from Jerry Nadler. It just came oh, out. He can, right, here we I'm go, sure on screen. Objective. He says, given that special counsel Mueller was unable to pursue criminal charges against the president, it falls to Congress to respond to the crimes, lies, and other wrongdoing of President Trump, and we will do so. No one, not even the president of the United States, is above the law. End quote from Jerry Nadler. Your well, I mean, Jerry Nadler just proved that he shouldn't be the chairman of that committee by saying he, he, Jerry Nadler has figured out already without an investigation that he's going to respond to the crimes of the president. I mean, even even Mueller didn't say that. Mueller said he couldn't reach a conclusion. Jerry's already reached a conclusion. I mean, how, how real uh, is it? Something as sensitive how as this, real is somebody it? like that shouldn't yeah. be sitting as the judge who's already. Re I mean, this, this is like saying. You know, you're guilty. I'm going to hang you. Let me give you a trial now. I mean, uh, Jerry Nadler has gone so far in showing his prejudice that it's totally intolerable that he's the chairman of that committee without coming to the conclusion that it truly is a witch hunt. How real is it that they move forward on impeachment? I don't know how real it is, but I, look, I'm, I'm not, that's, that, that's, that's being handled by the White House counsel. But from my point of view, unless uh, Nadler is removed, and they put a chairman on there who at least hasn't made all sorts of prejudicial comments and shown that he's made up his mind that a crime has been committed when nobody else has made up their mind that a crime is committed. I, I would think their investigation is illegitimate. It's, an, it, it's, a, it's a misuse of congressional power. Rudy Giuliani, thank you for your time. The president's attorney by telephone here.